Hey guys, I wanna to talk to you today about why I prefer and why I think you should use emergency communications with digital modes. Now, voice is great, voice is simple. Voice requires typically the minimum amount of equipment that most of us carry around and digital modes require some sort of computing device and display to transmit and receive. However, I think the inconveniences of carrying those additional items are greatly outweighed by the benefits that digital modes can provide. Namely, deciphering signals deeper into the noise. Now, I, I think we've all had experiences where even interacting person to person, we've had to ask people to repeat themselves because they just have a different accent, variations in speech patterns. We live up in our day. We live up in our day. Yes. Well, I know, yeah. <laughs> or just surrounding noise. <clears throat> now, you compile HF propagation into that and the variances when communicating can add a whole different layer of complexity to the situation. Software, listening to signals can listen a whole lot more effectively than the human ear can. And I don't know about you guys, but my ears are nowhere near where they used to be as far as efficiency. Nelson, you all right? What? Now, when we're t using HF voice, uh, single sideband again, typically transmit bandwidths are in the 2400 to 2600 kilohertz uh, uh, bandwidth. You're spreading all of your power along that bandwidth and that reduces efficiency. Add in antenna inefficiencies and it can really hamper how effectively you are heard to other people. Now, in a, an emergency situation, could possibly could be communicating life-saving information. That could be a major issue. Digital modes typically only need a fraction of what voice, mo voice mode needs in order to transmit uh, uh, effectively. I found in my experience that digital modes have greatly increased the reliability of good solid pathways, uh, signal pathways between known contacts at almost any time of day. There's a few different pieces of software I recommend and that I use routinely. Number one is JSA Call. Two is FL Digi, and that's kind of a suite of software. FL Digi includes FL Digi, FL MSG, and FL AMP, and those, those other programs help facilitate messages and files being transmitted through FL Digi. And the last two I recommend are WinLink and VerAC. Now, WinLink, you can use a couple of different other modems to transmit, but that's another topic for another day. I think the most popular way to transmit and the modem used for WinLink is uh, Vera HF. I'll put links for everything down in the description below. I just wanna hit a couple of particular topics on uh, why you would use each different digital mode and I, where I think they're best suited. Now, FL Digi uses typically the least amount of bandwidth down to about 50 Hertz, which in my opinion is great for finding good pathways and what frequencies are best suited for contacting other people who you can hear best and transmitting very short brief messages and uh, listening to message uh, listening to stations that can be a ways off it is a weak signal mode so that software is designed to really pick up noise that's down deep in the software and maybe not even audible through the static to the human ear on the radio speaker itself. The next one I wanna talk about is FL Digi. FL Digi is great for passing larger files in a net type uh, uh, communications environment where you would have a number of different stations checking in and passing traffic. A really great thing I said earlier with FL MSG and FL AMP is you, with FL MSG or FL message, you can compile a form or a file, a text file, to transmit over FL Digi come time for the net. And it allows for really effective traffic passing. The last two I wanna talk about both use Vera HF popularly. Winlink 
is something you could use to contact non-hams in an emergency situation. If you have a tornado or a hurricane or other major event that has knocked out grid communications, you can use that in order to transmit a message or an email to somebody who just has an email address and access to the internet. It's really effective for communicating uh, welfare messages, especially uh, my plan on using it would be for welfare messages around the area. If I have neighbors that want to send messages to family members, I can easily facilitate those communications. The last one I want to talk about is VAR-AC. VAR-AC is a great tool. It's relatively new in the suite of softwares I've been talking about, and it is just, it's fantastic. I, I can't recommend it enough. It does use a larger bandwidth, anywhere from 500 hertz to 2700 kilohertz. And it has a few different features that I really like. One of them allows asynchronous communication so that as long as the other station is running, nobody has to be there physically at the radio or computer in order to receive that message. You can check in if you can make a contact, it, it becomes an automated process, a semi-automated process, and you can leave a message with the receiving station and they can leave a message with you. You can exchange that information. It's beautiful if you have a good solid pathway there. Another great feature of Fair AC is its beaconing feature, which allows you to beacon out at a predetermined interval. And that really helps determine the right time and the right station to contact if you, if you need help or if you need to pass a message on to its destination. Well, that's just a few of the software programs I use for emergency communications and I think you should really consider if you are new to ham radio and just getting into the, the hobby, if you will, or just getting into radio for preparedness. We can go down a whole bunch of different avenues. Ham radio is the hobby of a thousand hobbies. So I really encourage you to do your deep dives there's thousands, hundreds, if not thousands of videos online explaining how to download and install and set up all of these pieces of software. I really encourage you to go ahead and get that done. And if you want to reach out, my call sign is Kilo Oscar 4 Charlie Echo Quebec. And hopefully I'll see you guys on the air practicing those skills because you can't, can't be effective unless you practice it. Toodles. So I'm in the middle of editing this video and I'm just got a little bit of inspiration from uh, the great grand thumb for dad advice. So I think I'm gonna put dad advice at the end of each video. We'll see how long that lasts. But dad advice for today, for this video will be just do better. And I don't mean that as in, I don't think you're doing good enough now because I don't know you, you don't know me. But you know what you know? You know where you're lacking you know where you're slacking. So pick it up, do better, because you can.